Hi, uh, my name is Tyler and I am a solutions architect at Sigma. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a bullet chart. Uh, bullet charts are great for measuring performance data. Anything where you have to do, say, in my case, forecasts versus actuals. Um, here we have a image, a quick example of what a bullet chart could look like. You have, in this case, a primary metric in the middle and then a comparison metric in the background. Um, it could be a stack bar chart. It could be a reference line. It could be an individual bar. But the idea is to compare one thing to another thing. Um, and so in order to do this in Sigma, there's two core concepts that we need to understand. Uh, reference marks and trellises. So a reference mark in Sigma can be either a line. In this case, this is measuring the average of my profit across all of my regions, or it could be a band, right? Um, in this case, this is measuring the standard deviation, one standard deviation to two standard deviations um, of that same profit column. Now, the problem with reference marks is that they cannot uh, be used for individual bars. It's an all or nothing kind of thing. And that's where trellises come into play. So a trellis allows me to break out bar charts by a second or third uh, attribute. In this case, I've got my bar chart for profit by region broken out by a product type. And you can see this scrolls across if we need it to. So I'm going to combine these two concepts to create something that looks a little more like an actual bullet chart. So coming back over here, this is my core data. I'm going to create a visualization off of this data. Let's put this side by side. Now, the first thing I'm going to do before I even start building the chart is I'm going to duplicate my store region here. I hit shift D to do that. And you'll understand why I had to do that in a minute. But now I'm going to create my chart. I'm going to put store region on the X axis, put actuals on the Y. Cool. Uh, and now I'm going to come over to my trellis and take that duplicated store region. And I'm going to drag that into trellis column. And so I've broken out my store region by my store region. And you can see now I have one individual bar within every single chart. And now I need to go format this. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to click on element formatting. Just a little bit of housekeeping here. I'm going to change my X axis to zero degrees. So it's a little more legible. And then I'm also going to get rid of my grid line marks. Gives it a little bit of a cleaner look in my opinion. So now that I've done that, I'm going to come over to my trellis shelf. And this did not exist until I dragged trellis um, into the configurator. Uh, but I'm going to get rid of a bunch of things here. I'm going to get rid of my title, the store region right here. I'm also going to get rid of these borders. And finally, I'm going to get rid of uh, these labels up at the top because I have them down here. It's kind of redundant. Uh, I said finally, but finally, finally, I'm going to unshare my X axis. So in this case, you can see I've got all these extra values for um, bars that don't actually exist. So by unsharing the x-axis, it's only going to show the bars that exist within each chart. So now my trellis looks like a normal chart, even though it's technically five individual charts here. And the last thing I'll do for my trellis configuration is it's hard to know right, notice right now, but if I start to collapse this, you'll see that my chart does not um, resize itself properly. And in some cases, this is, this is desirable, right? Maybe you've got 100 bars on a single graph and you want it to be able to scroll. Uh, but in my case, I only have five. Um, it's going to be pretty annoying if I try to resize this and it have to resize or have to scroll half of a bar. So I'm just going to change my tile size to compact. And so now, whenever I resize things, it'll resize appropriately. OK. So that's everything for trellising. Now let's go ahead and create some reference marks. Um, you'll notice also here that I have this scope option. And the scope option doesn't exist unless you're trellising. Right now, it's set to shared, which means I'm going to have one reference mark across all of my trellises. But I'm going to change that to per chart. I'm also going to change my reference mark style to a band so that we can create the illusion of a second bar. And for the beginning of my bar, Oops, not negative two. I'm going to create zero. Uh, now, if you have negative numbers, you might need to do a min of your numbers to get you know, the starting point. But I know that I only have uh, positive numbers, so zero is fine for me. And here, I'm going to do a sum of my actuals. 
I'm sorry, not actuals, <laughs> some of my forecasts. Uh, and I'm gonna get rid of my, my labels here. So this is a pretty basic bullet chart. Um, let's make this color a little more pleasing, make it green. And now we have a very, very basic bullet chart here. Um, but let's make it a little more interesting. Let's say that if my actuals has surpassed my forecast, I want it to be green. If it hasn't surpassed my forecast, I still want it to be red. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this aggregation here from a sum to a custom formula. And I'm actually gonna create two different reference bands. I'm gonna create a green reference band if forecast is less than actuals, and a red reference band if forecast is greater than actuals. So in my formula bar here, I'm gonna type if my forecast is less than um, or equal to my actuals. Then we're gonna say forecast, otherwise we're gonna say zero. And a reference band that goes from zero to zero is not going to appear at all on my chart. So now you can see here that I have only the bands where my actuals has surpassed my forecast. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate this and do the same thing for red. So I'm quickly gonna change this to red. And you'll notice that the color of my band has briefly changed here. Um, and that's just because these are two opaque uh, reference bands that are overlapping. So the colors are kind of merging a little bit. We're gonna fix that right now. So instead of less than or equal to, I'm just gonna say greater than. So now you can see we've got two different kinds of bands, um, one for red and one for green. And lastly here, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna add one of these little lines. Um, I didn't have a plan for this line. So I think what I'm just gonna do is uh, the average between my forecast and my actuals. Um, that doesn't really mean anything, but just for illustration purposes, that's what we're gonna do. Forecast and actuals. Cool. And there we have it. Um, the last thing I want to do is clean up my tooltip here. You can see I've got store region twice. Doesn't really make much sense. Um, and you can see I also don't have my actuals. So I'm gonna come back to my configurator here. Uh, I'm going to change this to trellis. And then I'm going to uncheck my show in tooltip option. So now you can see I don't have a redundant store region. And then I'm going to go over to my tooltip here and drag my forecast up. So now you can see I've got my forecast and my actuals and my region. And that's how you create a bullet chart. I hope this was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.